everyone welcome back to my channel I know it's been forever since I've posted anything um, I've actually been pretty sick lately so uh, I did record videos but unfortunately by the time I got around to editing them I couldn't remember exactly what I had done so at this moment uh, just so can get something out there in the world, I decided um, I was just going to do something new. Well, not something new, but um, this is one I've been working on for a while. I actually did a series of videos that I'll hopefully eventually post um, once I figure out exactly where they are and what I did with them. This is one I got from Hua Can. It is, oops, come on horses. It's the two horses. It's mosaic horses. There are a whole bunch of colors. Um, actually, this piece is 35 colors. It is 60 by 30. And yeah, you're going to hear a whole bunch of funky noise in the background. And just a warning, if you don't like that, then this is not the video for you. I have um, two cats and two dogs. And yeah, they're a bit of a handful. Um, I don't just have dogs. I have border. I have a purebred border collie and a border collie mix. So they're very active currently. Um, our purebred border collie and our kitten that we got in December is they're playing in the bathtub. So if you hear any weird loud banging noises or anything that sounds kind of strange, uh, yeah, they're playing. And these two have just kind of figured out each other, so, yeah. I'm just letting them be. It's kind of funny because we, we have another cat, and she's not really that old. She's only, like, I believe she's hitting around a year and a half now. And her and the, our purebred Border Collie Guinevere, they hit it off so well. Like, they were awesome right from the beginning. It actually took her a long time to warm up to our larger dog that um, she's Border Collie and uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback. And she's 130 pounds. She's a very, very big, sweet girl. But it took the kitten a long time to actually, uh, the first cat, a long time to warm up to her. Um, I'd always been a dog person, and I didn't know what to do with a cat. I'm going to tell you, honestly, no clue. My husband had always had cats, never had dogs, and of course, my husband didn't warn me. When we brought the first kitten home, we walked up to the house, um, we had had to stop and get everything. Actually, we were totally unprepared. For bringing the cat home so we had to stop and pick everything up on the way home um, but uh, he was carrying everything and I was carrying the kitten and I was actually carrying the kitten and in my arms we had picked up like um, a leash a halter for her and that so she couldn't escape if you hear that noise in the background like this it's a cap from um, a bottle the kitten's playing with. The, our new kitten, Sterling's playing with it. Um, he can find anything and make it a toy. But, yeah, so I walked up to the house carrying her in my arms. And, because I knew the dogs. I trusted my dogs. I knew their mentality. And they would look at this and they would go, oh, baby. It's a baby. They would recognize that it was a baby animal or just something. They're very gentle with other animals. Uh, we used to have a mini Holland Lop bunny. We actually had the bunny before we had the dogs and they grew up with him and he wasn't afraid of them. They were great with him. No issues. Um, we let him loose and 
they used to run around and play with him. So I kind of trusted that they weren't going to hurt the kitten. I, however, not having cats before, was not prepared for the kitten's reaction to the dogs, which was, oh boy, uh, to put it kind of gently, um, she turned into an absolute demon. Oh my God, I have no idea what happened with that. Um, I wasn't expecting it. She just went absolutely nuts. I'm just looking for a color and I can't find it. Oh boy. I'm wondering if I left a container out of my package. I haven't worked on this for a while, so excuse me for a second while I just check it out and see if I'm missing something. Yes, I am. I am missing stuff. What I had done when I kitted this up originally, there was so much of other one color or another that I used these little containers for a bunch, but I had four of these large containers around. So um, the colors I had a lot of, I put in these. And I haven't worked on this for a while, so I completely forgot about that. So, basically, um, yeah, the kitten went all, all kind of demonic, and she kind of scratched me, and I wasn't expecting it, so I was a little startled. So, unfortunately, our big dog, Abby, um, she's my protector, so instantly that put her back up with this kitten and I felt so bad because it went from oh my god you brought me this thing this cute little thing to I want to eat it so she was not impressed with this kitten right off so uh, that was not not a good introduction and yeah and I have a kitten trying to crawl up my leg and that's not good because uh, my legs are bare right now hey hey you can't crawl on everything let go sorry ah let go this is the little monster yes he is about three months old he just wants mommy's attention if I actually hold him in my arm. I can see if I can redirect this a bit so you can see. If I actually hold him like this while I'm painting, he will sit there and be quite happy. But uh, it doesn't, it does not make for easy diamond painting. Let me, sorry, readjust you. That's so you're on the camera. Yeah, but that is sterling. He's a little demon. And the introduction for him into our house was actually a lot easier. I'm just giving him a little bit of a belly rub before I put him back down so he'll leave me alone for a while. <coughs> Excuse me, I still got a really bad cold. Um, but yeah, um, we brought him home and it was a totally, totally different introduction. Um, he was still in his box. That he came from animal services and we did rescue him. They told us he was eight weeks old when we got him, but he was probably a little bit younger than that. Um, but we had him in the box still and when we came into the house, uh, my husband actually let Abby out into the yard and... Um, 
she actually was sniffing at the box and there was an absolutely no reaction from him <clears throat> inside the box he didn't growl he didn't move he just kind of took it um, we were told he was completely feral and well, that means basically for those of you that don't know it it basically means he was wild he wasn't exposed to anything he um, from what they told us like I've I talked to animal services and I had to ask them what they meant by that and the woman kind of looked at me like you do know what that means right and I said uh, yeah I do know what it means but there can be two extremes when you have a feral animal you can have an animal that's just afraid of everything and you just have to reassure it or you can have the animal that's hissing and spitting and just going at everything I'm just gonna lower you guys back down a bit um, hissing and spitting and you know that's the reaction to the world you never know exactly what you're getting so when I asked her I thought it was kind of funny that she took that to be like I I had no clue and it was like no I just want to know what extreme sorry guys trying to readjust you a little bit I moved you to see the kitten and now my angles are really weird that'll work so, um, yeah, it was just a case of, um, he was afraid of everything or so they said he wasn't hissing, biting, scratching, kind of afraid. He was just, um, nervous. Well, turns out that he wasn't quite as nervous as everyone thought he was because he was curious. He was so curious about the dogs that um, he, he just wanted to check them out. But Addy is very calm and sedate. We always jokingly say that that... Um, 25% Ridgeback or whatever mix that she's got in her has um, kind of calmed down the o Border Collie OCD. She relaxes. She's calm. She's incredibly intelligent. Like, I've turned around and looked at my husband and I said, how is it that she figures out stuff and the other one just sits there and stares at you? And his reaction was, well, that mix must be just enough o uh, to calm down that OCD that she can actually stop and think things through really quickly. And you know what? I think that's actually the case. Um, she sits and watches what we do and she learns by watching us. Uh, she's learned how to open our front door. Um, and it's a doorknob. It's not a lever style. She opens the door and if somebody knocks, um, she just goes and opens the door and lets them in. She's she's quite happy just to invite the whole world into our home. Um, she doesn't necessarily like everyone once they get in here. She is actually very, very nervous of new people, but um, I don't think she thinks that far ahead. She just opens the door and it's like, oh, come on, come into my house. You know, come, 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 new people. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to go run away from you. Um, but when we brought uh, Sterling home, that's the kitten you saw, the gray kitten. He's actually looks like he's Persian and tabby. He's got very subtle dark gray stripes running through him. He's actually, actually a fairly good looking kitten. And I'm not, I'm not a cat person. I am so not a cat person. But I got two cats. Um, yeah, go figure. So, um, anyway, we brought him home and we put him in a room. Uh, we not only had to separate him from the dogs to introduce him, 
which we learned how to introduce an animal properly, like a cat to the others properly, which was through a door. Um, they can get used to smelling each other and everything under the door frame. And then um, once they're used to each other, you slowly supervised visits with each other. And um, yeah, when we did that, it, with the first cat it was fine but uh took about a week and a half to introduce them but with this second kitten we had to one keep him separate from the first cat so they could get used to each other and then the dogs as well so lucky we have a three bedroom house so we actually put him in our spare bedroom set him up with everything he needed and um, he did not like being separated from everyone else he was not thrilled with the idea he actually surprisingly wanted to get involved and get in with the other animals pretty much right away he was very curious which was the opposite of what we were told by um, animal control when we adopted him so we were a little stunned by the fact that he was just so just so open to everything just going in and filling some spaces in that I missed earlier this this is the part that I hate it seems to take for Ever, and you get nowhere but these are all the ones I missed when I was originally going through and doing the color oh and in case you're wondering what I'm using I just have a pen here that my husband actually converted for me and I love it because it's really comfortable to hold I can do this for hours and my hands don't hurt my hands tend to get really sore when um, I've been doing this for a while so with the pink stylus so he actually made me up some pens and great my husband is so supportive with this um, ordering them paintings doing whatever I want to do he's just been absolutely phenomenal and no ladies I he does not have a brother there's not another one like him yep 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 but I'm sure from looking at it a lot of you have men out there that are really good and supportive at least all the channels I've seen uh, the husbands are very supportive of their wives doing this some of them, unlike mine, actually get involved and actually do diamond paintings themselves. My husband has absolutely zero interest in actually doing a diamond painting himself. For whatever reason, uh, I've asked him to try putting a couple diamonds on projects that I've been working on, and he's like terrified he's going to like mess them up or something. And I'm like, honey, you can't mess it up. It's just not possible. The truth of the matter is, he really just doesn't want to do it. So, I don't make him do it. But occasionally I will say, oh, you got to put one on this, because then, then you did it too. So, I laughed when I watched one of Ella's videos one day. Um... She was going on about original works of art, and she had gotten, like, um, I believe it was a Mona Lisa painting, and um, she was in on a secret, but she deliberately misplaces one diamond on every painting she does, because then it's not like any other out there, and I thought that was so funny. It it just, I, I nearly peed my pants. I was laughing so hard at him that I laugh at her videos all the time like she is hilarious I'm sure everybody 
out there that's seeing this hopefully has seen her videos if you haven't check out kicking cancer's butt and diamond painting um like i said she's awesome um if you're new to this and uh looking for other videos as well um diamond painting by donnie stitcherista uh mrs crochet and coffee she has me in stitches as well oh my god um I've actually been making a habit of trying, even if it's only for 10 minutes, to uh, sunny into her live chats that she does on Fridays. Um, at, it's 9 o'clock my time, but um, yeah, just for, just for a few minutes even, just to see what's going on, and she is just, she's hilarious. Um... I love the fact that, you know, she really just doesn't give a crap so much about what other people think. Well, I don't really want to put it that way. I'm sure, like, if it's something that's socially unacceptable, she would care. But as far as people's opinions, everyone goes on about um, Diamond Art Club with her. And I don't understand why. If you want to order and you want to order from Diamond Art Club all the time and that's what you like, damn, order from Diamond Art Club. I want a Diamond Art Club. I just can't justify the cost of it right now. And, you know, you like what you like. And I was ordering a ton of stuff from Hulacan. And the funny thing is, everyone, if you order from Hulacan or you order nothing but ever moment, nobody ever says anything about those. They only go on about Diamond Art Club. What is it about Diamond Art Club that seems to get everybody so much? I don't understand it. From what I can see, the canvases look great. Um, their company, like anybody else, so I, I just don't understand why everyone has this hang-up about Diamond Art Club. Yes, their prices may be a little higher than some others. Yes, they're, um, they have a higher shipping cost if you're out of the U.S. If you're in the U.S., it's free shipping. I'm not in the U.S. I'm in Canada. So for me... It's, it, it would cost me more to order from them. And that's where my hang up right now is, is if I'm gonna order from them, which I will one day, I'm going to join, I'm just readjusting you guys, sorry if I, I don't wanna make anybody sick, but I gotta readjust. So, but yeah, if, if, you like Diamond Art Club and you want Diamond Art Club? Get Diamond Art Club. Come on. Like, you know, nobody ever, ever moments expensive or, or more expensive out there, and nobody ever complains about ever moment. Uh, no, you cannot have what's in that bag. You don't hit me. My kitten. <laughs> He's playing. Oh, so anyway, yeah, and that was him just jumping down. If you heard that little sound, he makes that sound constantly. But back to, um, you know, if you want to order canvases, I'm sure there's people out there and they only order from certain stores. And if that's the case, hold more power to you. Order from wherever you want. I don't understand what this big deal is on, oh, you order all the time from this place, or you order all the time from this place. Good for them. You know, like, order from where you're happy from. If you don't want to order from those places, don't. It, it's really, really a simple thing. If you have an issue with ordering from Diamond Art Club, nobody's forcing you to order from Diamond Art Club. 
don't, <laughs> you know, but don't go at people that do order from them and enjoy ordering from them. Why is it I don't understand why people feel that they need to make other people miserable in order to accomplish whatever it is they feel they need to accomplish. And once again, I'm looking for a color I can't find. Oh boy. Okay, I'm going to pause you for a second. I'm going to figure out where this is and then I'll be right back because this could take a minute. Okay, I'm back. I found it. Oh boy. Um, yeah. I've got... You know what? I think my videos for the next little while are going to be me finishing projects that I started that I didn't finish. Um, I am so bad for that. I get a new diamond painting and I am so excited to start it that I kit it up and I start it and then I don't finish the old one. So, yeah. That's going to be my new goal. My new goal is going to be to finish all the diamond paintings that I didn't finish before. So what I'll probably do for videos is I'll do a whip and chat just to kind of start it off and introduce it because like I said, my videos I recorded before, uh, they're a bit of a disaster. And I'll go through and edit them and put them up and get them get some stuff up online and back into this so yeah so for the next little while I'm probably going to be finishing off video finishing off paintings that I have that I started and there are works in progress that I'm totally lost on so uh, I'll probably start off with a whip and chat just to bring the project back in and then I will do some time-lapse videos of me finishing them because man I can talk forever but I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here and listen to me the whole time and ramble and ramble and ramble so um, yeah another thing that's happened that made it kind of start from fresh is I'm going to try to edit these videos as I do them. Yes, I said edit. If you looked at my previous videos before this one, I'm not big on editing videos. Um, I was so focused on working on my projects that I didn't um, edit the videos so much. Basically, it was ooh, whatever I recorded is what you got. I put a title page on the end, beginning. I put a you know exit page on the back and uploaded. That's what you got. So now going forward from this moment, and this is why I'm struggling with the videos that I had, is um, a bunch of them are time lapse. And, um, yeah, so they're time lapse, and I started them off, and I do not know what I did, but they are all over. So, yep, when I can straighten out, I will straighten out and put in order, but like I said, just to start fresh, it's... start over and come up with something new and I'm gonna finish off a bunch of paintings that I started not all the paintings um, I do do I start online or videoing in fact um, there's a lot of parts of paintings that you don't see on video and the reason for that is I take them to work with me I take them to work with me because um, My husband and I uh, go to work together. Actually, my husband drives me to work on days when he doesn't work. 
but on days when he does work, we work in the same area. In fact, my husband works exactly two kilometers away from me. And I don't drive. So if um, I was to go to work and take the bus on the days that he works, I would probably have to leave about 20 minutes after he did in order to get to work on time. It's about an hour and a half by public transit for me to get to work. I don't see the point in that. So if I go with him, it's about 20 minutes to work in the car. And yeah, I get dropped off pretty early. He starts work at 7 a.m. I don't start work until 9. So I get dropped off at work at like 6.30. And basically, I have a lot of downtime. You know, I get dropped off at work somewhere 6.30, um, quarter to 7 in the morning. And I don't start work till 9. So uh, I go sit in an area in the back of the store. I can take my light pad. I have a battery pack. In fact, I actually have a cable there plugged in for the time being. But I just, I, I just attach my light tablet to if I need it. And I sit in the back and I diamond paint. I roll it up into a tube. I take my diamonds um, in containers, kits, um, if it's a hua can, um, I might just work out of the baggies. And, um, yeah, I just sit there and diamond paint. But it's not a situation where I can video. So the lighting in that area of the store is not great. It doesn't need to be great. It's not where we work. So it's... It's a staff area. It's, you know, essentially, actually, I'm working on my boss's desk in the back. But my boss's desk is actually, you know, where we go have lunch, where we, if we're taking a break, you know, it's it's a multi it's a multi-purpose area. So, yeah, you're going to see a lot of videos where it's just work in progress. Um, some of them I'll be starting on here, but probably not too many. Um, I get them all delivered to my work, all the time in paintings. So it's really funny because if I get one delivered to work, of course, um, if it's a night when my husband is working, uh, he works a 12-hour shift. So I left that part out. He works a 12-hour shift. So he works from 7 till 7. I only work from 9 till 5. So I have another two hours after work that I can do on my diamond painting too. So really, um, I'm at work, but I have like four hours sometimes where I'm just there because he works an eight hour, I work an eight hour shift, he works a 12. So yeah. That's just the way it goes. But if I took the bus home, I would only get home about 20 minutes before he got home. So it just it just doesn't make sense. I can take public transit or I can sit in the comfort of my own car. And even if I did drive, there's nowhere at work for me to park the vehicle. I would have to pay for parking in... Um, another lot that was close to the store and paying for monthly parking around there it's like it's like 300 or better a month and you know what I don't need to spend $300 plus gas plus maintenance on a vehicle in order to be able to drive to work not when I can sit and done and paint for a few hours um, on the days I get dropped off early. 
and it's not every day. Um, basically, he's at work now. So this week, he worked um, Monday, Tuesday, and then he works Friday, Saturday. Sunday technically being the next work week, but he basically works Friday to Sunday, and then he'll have Monday and Tuesday off, and then he'll work th uh, Wednesday or th and Thursday, and then he'll f have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. So it's, we look at it as the simplest way, it's a two week rotation. Whatever days he works one week, he has off the next week. And it's, uh, basically starts off two days on, two days off, three days on, two days off, you know, three days, uh, two days on, three days off. So it's, it works. You know, it gives me alone time sometimes, um, like now. So I'm here all day by myself, which I love. I'm an only child, so it doesn't bug me. I'm used to having my alone time. In fact, it was such an adjustment for me when I moved in with him that, oh boy, I, I, I was I was fighting for a long time. I was going crazy because all of a sudden there's this other human being around that I'm with all the time. Now, I did live with my parents until I moved in with him, but that was, that was a different situation. Um... I could go off and do whatever I wanted, um, you know, come and go. It was basically, um, there was room at my parents' place. I paid rent. Um, it wasn't like I was living off my parents. I paid part of the rent. I paid part of the groceries, um, or I bought my own stuff. You know, it, it, it just, it just made sense. Why go out and spend a fortune on an apartment that I was never really in? I was at work and just go home and sleep. And in Toronto, I'm in Toronto, Canada, apartments are expensive here. Um, you know, my husband works at a building. He does security and... Um, It was in the building, like the rent, the starting rent for a unit in there is $2,500 a month. Plus, in Toronto, you pay your utilities. Um, I don't know how it works in other places, but it used to be that if you rented an apartment, if you rent an apartment in Toronto, um, your hydro and that was included. Well, now it's not. Now, if you rent an apartment, you pay your hydro bill and everything else, too. So, it makes it, 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 makes it really expensive. So, not only are you paying, like, $2,500 on average for an apartment in Toronto now, and that's just your basic apartment. That's nothing fancy. That's just your apartment. And um, it's not a huge apartment. Some of these apartments that are going for, you know, close to $2,000 are not huge. They're just your basic everyday thing. And then you're paying another, depending on how much you're home and depending on how conservative you are with stuff, you could be paying another, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars on hydro. So that doesn't make living cheap, and that does not usually include parking. If you have a vehicle, parking your car, that's usually an additional fee. If you want locker space um, in your condo or apartment, that's additional. It just, it's kind of brutal, actually. So, yeah. We, uh, I stayed with my parents because it just made more sense. Uh, one, it helped them out. Two, it helped me out. So, <laughs> let's face it, it helped me out. It helped me out a lot. So, yeah. 
I do not apologize for living at my parents' place. Uh, a lot of people do it nowadays because everything's just so, so pricey. Like, you can't afford to live on your own anymore so much in the beginning. Oh, well, I was going to try this square bow, but the square bow's broken. It came in a kit that was broken. So now I just want to find a small green boat or something that I can... So I don't have to use my big one for everything. You know what? My big boat works. I got this big tray so I could use this big tray. I'm going to use my big tray. Um, yeah. So I'm an only child, so I'm used to being alone. I'm used to having my own space. I'm used to not having to... I was very used to not having to answer to anybody uh, in the beginning. It, it was kind of, it was kind of weird because all of a sudden, and the biggest thing was, is like when, even at my parents, like my room is my room. It's, it's my space. Um, I've never had to share my space like that with my with anybody it was mine I didn't have a sister that I had to share my room with and share my things with and everything and of course when you move in with somebody and you're in a relationship yeah you you generally share a room so it was a it was a big adjustment for me um, and of course because it's a new relationship you're you're sharing the space, but you're not just sharing the space. You're sharing everything. Like you're sharing the living room. You're sharing the TV. You're sharing like everything. And there's no getting away from it. And because it's a new relationship, he wanted to be with me all the time, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Great. That's what a relationship should be. You should want to spend time together. Otherwise, uh, why are you in a relationship? My husband also made me a multi-placer tool. Um, but it was, it was weird for me because, you know, yes, I would go out and watch TV with my parents sometimes or television. We'd watch a movie together or something. But at the same time, I could go back into my room and I can watch whatever I wanted there if I wanted to. If I was working on um, something, if I had been working on something like this, like a diamond painting, I could go into my space and do it. And I didn't have to worry about was I not paying attention to someone else? Was I, you know, ignoring somebody else? Did somebody else want to do something with me? Um, you know, yes, my mom would say to me, are you going to come, or do you want to come watch a movie with me? Yeah, sure. I did things with my parents, but it's not the same type of, this is going to sound horrible, but I mean, say it's not the same type of pressure to do it. And when you first move in with somebody and you're used to being all alone, in that way like an only child and you're not used to having to share your space or be worried about whether or not this person thinks you're paying enough attention to them or you know just trying to figure out how to coexist with this other person it, it, it can be kind of crazy and yeah you're hearing banging around in the background and the err sounds from the kitten and the kitten he's not mad he just makes this noise constantly it's like his equivalent of a trill it's we laugh because when he goes around he just he runs around the house and he's just insane when he runs but the whole time he's running he's going he sounds like a little engine and he's actually playing with uh, Guinevere, our Border Collie, which is actually kind of sweet. 
they're playing together. They're just learning how to play together. She, oh, I was saying um, about how his interaction with her. She just gets so excited. She is hilarious. She's like this little ball of energy. Um, she's seven and a half, so she's starting to mellow out, I'd like to say, but eh, not so much. She's still a ball of energy. But it's funny because she gets so excited. She gets so, so, so excited about stuff that um, she moves fast or she just springs and it was frightening the kitten that she moves so fast. So um, it took them, it's, it's taken them a while to figure out how to play together for him to get used to her being um, spastic at times. Um, it's funny, we come home from work and we have um, three sets of stairs leading to up uh, to our upper level. So we have a U-shaped stairwell. And the landing at the top is her favorite place. When we come home or when she sleeps at night, that's where she is. That's where she sleeps, that's her space. She's claimed that, it's, it's funny, I don't know why she's claimed that, but she has. And she will run up ahead of us and get to this space. And he's usually upstairs when we come home. And he will run down to the landing to her. And it's like, oh, oh, my God, I missed you, my best friend. For a minute, he'll, she'll sit there and he'll be rubbing up against her headbutting and stuff like that. And sternly, get out of there. And, um... And he will, um, you know, cuddle up against her. It's funny, we joke that Guinevere's yawn, and that's the dog Guinevere. She, she opens her mouth so wide when she yawns. And they usually sit there side by side, and there's this, like, yawn that just comes out of both of them. And they both open their mouth so wide. It's like, oh my God, you could shine a light through and see the other side. You swear, that's how much they open their mouth. But it's so cute because they do that. And she's sitting there, other than that, sitting so still. And she's so happy because this kitten is right up against her. And you can tell from looking at her that all she wants to do is... <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I, I stopped for a moment because she's actually laying behind me on the floor. And he's gone and laid beside her and he's rolling. He's rolling around beside her. Like just in the last couple of days, they've gotten really close. But, um, and she's, and she's learned to just stay still. But I'm looking at her and she is so tense because she is so excited because this kitten's right there beside her and she just wants to burst. She's so happy. Uh, and that's what makes me laugh because she'll sit there and um, when they greet each other at night, um, you can tell from looking at her that she just wants to burst. Her eyes are bugging out of her head. She just wants to just wiggle and after a minute or so, all of a sudden, her tail will start to go. It's like there has to be a release for some of the energy. And it's funny because as soon as her tail goes, he pounces on her tail, which she just takes. She takes so much. She is amazing. Um, the first kitten, when we brought her home, she used to just fly off stuff and land on the dog constantly as she went by. And, you know, Guinevere just took it in stride and she loved every second of it. And she's been trying so hard to get this kitten, this new kitten, to play with her or be near her that um, it's just been, it's been so much fun to watch. And now she's just 
you know, calm, calm for the moment. They're both kind of falling asleep. They're curled up and they're, he's curled up against her and he's going to sleep. And she's just laying there enjoying it and watching it. She's figured out that if she doesn't move, he will stay with her. But at some point, she's just going to get overexcited with the fact that he's there and she's going to spring up and he's going to go running in the opposite direction because that's what they do. But, um, yeah. Our poor Border Collie Guinevere is so friendly with other things and she just wants everyone to be her friend that she got sprayed by a skunk in the face because she went up to Mr. Skunk to say hi how are you yay I want to be your friend and of course Mr. Skunk Mr. Skunk doesn't want to be friends Mr. Skunk got scared and Mr. Skunk gave her a surprise yeah and when we first moved here um we lit our house is near a river um actually it's near a big it's near a big park city park and on the other side of it is the humber river and um so we have a lot of wildlife around here and when we first moved there were so many totes in our yard there was just toads jumping everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. And one night, um, we're sitting out on our patio, and Guinevere is lying under the patio table, and a toad literally jumped on her nose. Yep, there she goes. She's just rung up. She got overexcited, and she's gone, and the kitten gone the other way. Um... But she was so excited, uh, she just laid there and let this toad jump across her nose. And, uh, yeah. So she followed the toad. And she got him into a corner. And then she proceeded to lick the toad. That was not a good idea. Uh... Just so for those of you who don't know, toads excrete um, a toxin on their skin. That's to discourage, a lot of them, that's to discourage animals from eating them. Well, she taste tested the toad. Not to, not to hurt them, not to eat them. She was just like, oh, you're my friend. I'm going to give you a kiss. And yeah, he didn't taste so good. And we were lucky it was just a tiny, timid little kiss because if she had really gone to town and really given him a kiss, um, the toxin could have made her really sick. It didn't, luckily. But, yeah, I was a little nervous there for a while that she was going to get sick on me. And, no, the toad did not turn into a prince. He hopped away. But um, for ages after that, because we didn't have the cats at this point when we first moved into the house, uh, we would leave the front door open when we were outside in the yard, because uh, the yard's in the front. And uh, she would she would herd toads into the house. And the bunny was in, we had the bunny in the house, at the, we still had a bunny at this point. He actually died at the age of nine and a half, so he died of old age. But he had a bunny, we had a bunny hutch and enclosure inside for him, and it had a mesh wire area where she could go lay beside him, they were best friends, she could lay beside him on one side and he would lay on the other side of the mesh and they would just be there together and if she wasn't around for a while he would actually stomp his little foot until she came so uh, yeah they got along but the toads 
she started bringing toads into the house. She started hurting them into the house. And she tried to push them towards the bunny cage. It's like she had a collection. So there was a point there for like three weeks. Um, and during this time, I was actually coming home on my own. My husband was at a different uh, location. So I get home and I'd sit outside for a couple of hours in the summer with her. And, uh, yep, she'd bring toads in the house. So I would spend an hour each night checking and making sure and taking whatever, catching whatever toads she brought into the house and taking them back out. So, yes, one of your loves, loves other animals. And she's just figuring it out with this kitten. So, yeah. I totally have no idea what else I was talking about. But yeah, um, it makes things interesting. It's life. My husband and I don't have any children together. Uh, my husband does have a, a son from a previous marriage. Uh, we weren't able to have children, so we don't. We have... We have animals and I know there's people out there that are gonna say it's not the same thing you know what no it isn't the same thing but this is our version of a family having the animals and if somebody doesn't like that or they disagree with that statement you're entitled this is my family these are my babies these are my four-legged children. I don't have two-legged children. I have four-legged children. So, basically, um, you mess with my animals and I will mess you up, I think, just like I would with anybody else. Uh, if I had a child, they are my company. They are my they are my life and they are going to absolutely destroy and break my heart one day and that's fine I accept that as part of taking them in it's just like I was having a conversation with my mom one day and I was like oh our last dog my last dog when I had to have her put down um, she was old and she was sick she had cancer um, yeah it was getting bad. She was starting to have, we figured she had, um, well, we knew she was sick. We actually booked an appointment with the vet to have her put down and we booked it like a month in advance. So, uh, we booked it. We said, this is the day. And if we need to bring her sooner, we'll bring her sooner, but we're going to do it by this date before she gets too bad. She was already having issues they were bad enough, bad enough, and it was affecting her, but I didn't want her quality of life to be, like, to the point where she had none. And it was over, it was getting difficult, and she was starting to have seizures and stuff, um, and she wasn't moving around so much. And she was a 65 pound dog. So to have a dog that's that big and she doesn't want to move and she's kind of mopey and she sleeps all the time, our feeling was we didn't want her to suffer. So when we discovered she was sick and she started off as a 65 pound dog, um, and she was, a, she was a lot of hair. She was a husky and shepherd cross. So she had a ton of hair, but she was also um, other mixed breeds. Uh, she was a bunch of breeds mixed in, but predominantly husky and shepherd. But she used to, her hair used to get so long and she used to get so overheated in the summer that usually early spring we would have her trim down and we would take her to the groomers and they would pull out her undercoat um she had a 
you can make a new dog from her undercoat. And people who have um, huskies and shepherds and stuff like that are going to understand exactly what I'm talking about with that. But it's like you you don't know where all this hair came from. Or, you know, when you find it in your house. So we used to get her undercoat basically take her to a groomer and they used to take her undercoat out and just trim her down just a little bit so it was cooler for her especially when she was getting older we didn't really do it to her when she was young because there was no need their fur actually offers them a degree of protection from the sun and the heat too but as she was getting older um her coat was actually getting to the point where it was making her really, really hot and uncomfortable. So we would have her trimmed down a little bit, and it always grew back um, so that she was more comfortable for the, the hot weather. And when we did this, we did this in March. We And usually coming out of winter, um, I'm sure other people find this too because you're not out as much with your animals or for as long over the winter they tend to gain a couple pounds so they usually come out a little bit heavier at the end of winter than they did going into it well this wasn't the case she had so much hair um, and everything else that it wasn't noticeable that how much weight she was losing um, but when we took her to the groomer and we went back to pick her up. I I honestly didn't recognize, almost didn't recognize the dog that she was because she was so, so thin. Like there was, it was clear that something was going on. So made it. I called the vet and I talked to the vet, and where she was actually groomed was another vet clinic. It wasn't the vet clinic that. Um, we took her to, it was just the groomer we used. Because she was very particular about who she would allow to touch her. She was, she was very nervous. She wasn't an aggressive dog. She was just a very nervous dog. And she had her people and that was it. And she liked this groomer. So we let her, we took her to this groomer even though it was in a vet clinic that wasn't ours. So, um, I called my vet, and while we were at the groomers, because it was a vet office, um, they have a scale. So we put her on the scale at the vet's office. They let us do that. We took her weight, and her 65 pounds was actually down to 50. Um, 65 pounds was her healthy weight, totally healthy, um, lean weight during the, the summer. So that was her lean weight. And when I say lean, like, you know, you could touch her and you could feel things if you, um, you didn't have to press too hard to feel bone. It, it was, it was the proper weight she should have been at was 65 pounds. And when she's 50 and coming out of the winter, when we would normally expect to see her at about 70 pounds, uh, 20 pounds underweight for a dog that size is, that's huge. So when I called them and told them that this was the issue, um, they said they took a look at her and but prepared me that this and given her age and other things that had happened in the past um, she probably had cancer she wasn't eating very much her teeth and everything that was the first thing they wanted to look at they wanted to make sure that there was no issues um, in her mouth that were causing her um, to not be able to eat properly and there wasn't and she was eating um, just not as much 
but everything was fine as far as food consumption went. Um, she was old. She was uh, 13 and a half by this point. So for a large dog, that's a significant, that's a pretty good age. So we decided to book an appointment to, you know, send her on her way and take her home. And for that month, for that month, she got everything she loved. Like, you know, usually you have to do it in moderation because if you give them too much treats, it's not good for them. They gain a lot of weight. They, you know, things happen. It's not healthy to do that with them. Well, for this month, it was like, you know what? <laughs> you only got a month left. So you get everything you love. Everything. As much of it as we can possibly give you. We spent time, a lot of time with her. We always spent time with her, but we spent that much extra time with her. At that point, um, I was dating my husband, and for and because he had a younger son, there were some days like when his son wasn't there during the week when he didn't have him. Um, I was staying at his place with him. It was. Um, you know, we were we were doing the trial kind of see if we can handle each other and move in together. That was our plan. But with his son, we were taking things kind of slow and making sure things were adjusted and everything beforehand. So basically half the week I was at his place, half the week I was at my parents' place, which is where the dog was at my parents' place. Um, for that last month, I spent more time at my parents' place than I did with him. There were, like, for the last two weeks, I basically said to him, um, no, I'm at my parents' place. I, I'll come up. I'll spend time with you. We can go out for dinner. We can do... Uh, you know, sit and watch movies or whatever, but uh, I'm going home. I'm not staying at your place at all for the last week. I'm going home and I'm spending it with her. And on um, the weekends when he wasn't working, there was one weekend during that time where he wasn't working at all. Um, and it was the last weekend, full weekend that we had her um I told him I couldn't see him at all that weekend and he understood I just basically spent all the time cuddling her holding her you know playing with her as much as she could play at that point she wasn't playing very much but actually to be perfectly honest a lot of the time was spent um either I was lying on my bed and she was lying beside me with her head on me or if I was sitting watching TV she had her head in my lap and I was stroking her head there was there was a lot of that and we gave her basically everything we could for the last month we made it we made it exceptionally good for her we spoiled her rotten and it kind of destroyed me when we put her down um, we took a puppy that was five and a half weeks old when we got her. She had been abused before we got her. She did not want to be touched by anybody, like no humans. We had another dog at the time. We had had another dog when we brought her into the house. Um, all she wanted to do was be with that other dog. She didn't want people. And when we took her out for walks, um, you know, she tolerated us touching her to put the leash on. She would tolerate, you know, us carrying her downstairs if we had to because she wanted to go outside. But 
if there wasn't any benefit in it for her, she really didn't want to be held. You'd pick her up and she would struggle to get away. She was just scared. And she was the cutest, cutest little puppy. Um, she looked like a little St. Bernard, and she wasn't one. And unfortunately, she was one of those puppies that every single person on the street wanted to touch and wanted to see. And sometimes, like, I've never had this with any of my other dogs. Never. Um, not to this extreme. But... Like, you'd be walking down the street and one person would stop and want to see her. But then you'd look up all of a sudden and there'd be like 20 people. 20 people were, that were totally unrelated to the first person and unrelated to most of the people that were standing around that all wanted to see her and touch her. And she was not the type that wanted to be seen and touched. Even when she got older um, and an adult, everybody, like I've never had anybody want to actually go at any of my dogs the way they went at her. She was, she was very unique looking. Um, she was Husky Shepherd, Australian Shepherd. Um, that was mommy. And then daddy was a purebred Cocker Spaniel. So she was basically looked like a Husky Shepherd with Cocker Spaniel ears glued on. And she had this little tuff of hair on top of her head. You know, she was actually, she was actually really cute. She stayed cute through her whole life kind of thing. She was beautiful. And she was black and white with these brown ears and this brown tuff of hair on top of her head. She was really kind of unique. So I guess that's why everyone wanted to stop and check her out and they wanted to know what she was. And of course, everyone wants to touch. Well, she didn't want to be touched. So it was um, when she was a pup and that she would only let us pick her up when the crowds got so much that it was the lesser of two evils to let somebody she kind of trusted pick her up than to be with all these strangers. And finally, when she hit six months old, all of a sudden, out of the blue one day, she decided that she wanted us to touch her. She wanted us to cuddle her. She wanted us to just love her to bits. It's like it took her six months to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Because we had the other dog, and the other dog was getting attention. And sometimes you could sit, and you could look at her, and you could tell. She wanted it. She just didn't know how to go about it, how to let herself have that attention. And it was kind of heartbreaking, but, you know, um, they had this video or this ad on TV at one point, and it was um, basically an adopted dog, and they were saying the best reward was when they adopted you back. And you know what? It truly is. But when, uh, when they leave your life, I was, I was so heartbroken. And the worst thing is, is I actually had her put down, uh, I had her put down on my birthday. That was what worked for the time frame we were looking at. And... It was, it was difficult. And for my poor mom, I actually moved out that day and moved in with my now husband the same day. Um, my boss, uh, actually my former boss that we had both worked for at one point um, actually called me um, a week before um, we had this scheduled and he said I uh, just called to see how you were doing he actually called me at my current work and said it's called to see how you were doing um, I was talking to your mom and your mom said you know this was happening 
And he says, and he said, she said you were moving out. He says, what are you trying to do to your mother? You are trying to, like, kill her or something. You're, the dog's going to be gone. You're going to be gone all in the same day. Like, what are you doing? And it was, it was kind of funny um, when I look back at it. But, um, yeah, it was devastating. It took me four years to decide to even look at another puppy. And I was having this conversation with my mom going, I don't know if I want to do this again. It was, it was horrible. But you get all the rewards in between. But at the end, it was just like, oh. And then I'm looking around at things now, and I'm like, great. Having one and having to go through that with one was bad enough. But I look at our life now, and I'm like, now we have four? Like, punishment, but can't think about that. And then, of course, Abby now is getting older, and she's an incredibly large dog. So we don't know exactly what to expect as far as how long she's got left. I would love to see, at least, I want another, I want at least another five years. I just don't know that I'm going to get them. Realistically, I'm preparing myself because, um, yeah, she's going to hurt more than the other one, and the other one nearly just destroyed me. Um, I've had um, some medical problems, and a side effect of these problems is I've developed having seizures, and Abby knows when I'm going to have a seizure long before I do. And uh, she takes, uh, she will actually push me to a place where I'm safe. When I, when, so when I do have the seizure, I'm in a place where I am safe. When I'm not feeling well, she is constantly with me. Um, if something happens that I do have a seizure and my husband's home, she actually goes and gets my husband. The funny part about that is she goes and gets my husband, but then she doesn't want to let my husband get near me. So it's kind of like, yeah, mommy's in trouble, but no, you can't touch her. So my husband said at times, like, you know, I have to spend a couple minutes before I can even get to you persuading Abby to let me get through. She's so protective of um, of you in this situation, and yeah, so really bonded to her, and it's gonna be gonna be hard. So, yeah. So people, you know, those people out there that say animals are not like kids. Um, you can't have a relationship with them like kids. No, you can't have a relationship with them like kids. But there are those of us out here that, you know, feel strongly enough about our animals that we will tear you limb from limb if you touch them. They are not just animals to us. They are a hell of a lot more. So, you know, you want to judge on that, you can judge on that. I have four of them, and they are my life. You hear them in the background, and of videos and that's just the way it's going to be like I'm not going to shut them up somewhere so that there's peace and quiet in the background and everything else you're going to hear them squabbling sometimes you're going to hear them you know jumping banging whatever um that's not for you then this probably isn't the right channel for you either um, I'm not going to stop them from, you know, living their life. They're happy. Um, we 
jokingly say we've got like the happiest kitten on the face of the earth right now because he, he literally runs around trilling everywhere he goes. He purrs, he trills, he makes these happy noises constantly when he's awake. It's only quiet now because he's actually asleep somewhere. So he goes on all night, all day, whenever he's awake. Every single thing he can find that he can turn into a toy to play with and amuse himself with, he does. <clears throat> we don't always want him playing with the things he finds, but yeah. This is just a place where there's a lot of noise from a lot of animals and it's just the way it goes. So, I'm just looking at the time. We're like at an hour and 20 minutes. So, I actually think I'm going to cut this here um, for now because I'm actually starting to lose my voice and my throat's getting pretty sore. So, I'm um, going to stop this video here and probably come back with this one in a time lapse. Um, like I said, got a lot of paintings that I have started and I haven't finished and it's time for me to get my butt in gear and actually finish some. I, I have completed diamond paintings I just haven't completed anywhere near the number I've started so and I'm super super excited I have one coming in that I want to do so bad. Um, if you check it out, Crawlerpex channel, um, she's doing a great wall of China, and it is seventy by two hundred centimeters, and she's been doing it all um, in time lapse, and it is just a stunning picture. Um, it's just stunning painting the detail um, there's it, when she's done she takes a picture of the overall canvas so you can see and she has to stand on a ladder to do it and it's actually really hard to tell the area in the beginning where she diamond painted and where it was just canvas. It is that much detail. It is just, it's a gorgeous piece. It's huge. So the whole time I've been watching her do this and I said she's in, she's now into like the last quarter of this piece and she's been working on it for a long time. Um, I've been resisting the urge to actually go buy it myself. Well, I broke down and I went and bought it myself. So I'm so excited for that piece to come in and to get started on it. But I'm going to try to make myself finish off a whole bunch of these other things so that um, so I have containers for it. Um, another thing I'm working on that's huge and it's taking a long time is I'm doing a heaven and earth design. Um, I have not really videotaped a lot of that. Um, I will do one. Uh, it's just that is so slow. It's 90 colors and it takes forever just to get anywhere with it because you're changing co the color changes so much. <clears throat> so I will probably do an updated progress one with that and show you where I'm at with it. It is, um, it's a big piece. <laughs> it's a big piece with a lot of color. I literally have a, a basket. Um, like when we go to the, I don't know what everyone else has. <clears throat> where they are <coughs> excuse me but our grocery stores um, 
a lot of them sell reusable bags, or in fact, most of them do. Uh, we get charged for bags here um, when we use plastic bags, which is a great idea because it encourages people to use re reusable stuff, so we're not putting so much in the landfill, and it's better for the environment. But they actually had buckets, <coughs> too, and they're... They're fairly big buckets. And mine is half full of containers for this diamond painting. There's a he heaven and earth design. It's It's got containers like this in it, except they're round. And yeah, it's, it's full. It's got like 90 of them in it. So I literally have to set that on a chair beside me and pick through it as I'm working on it. Anybody that's done a heaven and earth design diamond painting um, will totally get what I'm saying. If you want to check out a good one with a heaven and earth design painting, unboxing, and um, stuff, you can check out uh, Diamond Painting by Donnie. She has one that she's been working on. Um, she's doing hers a little bit differently. She's actually... Uh, putting the ca uh, pattern on the canvas and then working with it. I'm not. I'm working from uh, my uh, iPad and the actual paper pa paper pattern, but well, digital pattern, and putting it on a blank canvas. Uh, Shopaholic Sam has. Uh, d she's done a couple of videos that she's done. Uh, with a heaven and earth design and she's doing it the way I am with the blank canvas so you can check out her videos um, I will try to find it and link it in the box below um, and add them so you can go check out those videos and yeah so until then and uh, next time have a great day uh, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to see more videos please subscribe below um, like leave a comment let me know what you want to see more of uh, yeah until then have a great day have a great night whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this I said I'm hoping to actually put this up today uh, going to go through and edit my first video actually edit the video so hopefully it will go up today today is February 2nd so my plan is to get it up so it's up for tonight if it doesn't make it up today, you know I ran into a little more of a glitch with editing than I thought I was going to. So everyone, have a great one and catch in the next video.